Hello and welcome. I'm Maria from So Through Time, and this year I have made a Regency ensemble that is meant to be a daytime look for about 1813. I've so far made the dress and the jewelry to go with it. And there's videos on them. I'll link them down below. And I also have a quick video of kind of going through the timeline of the Regency era and how the fashion changed during this era. But since this is a daytime look and the idea was that this would be something that Daphne Bridgerton would wear when she's promenading with the Duke. So of course I do need to make some outerwear because it's not really appropriate to just go in your gown out in the sun and get your skin burnt. So I needed a bonnet or a hat. Now throughout the Regency era there is so many different options for different headwear. There's all different kinds of hats and bonnets and the shapes, some of them are really wild and the style of them changes from time to time and some styles are very specific to a certain era. But I wanted something that would work that I could find from fashion plates from the 1813 year, but also that would work for other eras that wouldn't be really super specific to only this one time. So looking at fashion plates, the one thing that stuck out at me was that the bonnet keeps on continuing. It's basically a continuum of the 18th century bonnet. The, what really happens is that the brim just widens further to the back of your head. Sometimes it seems to go all the way around. And then it just, because your hair deflates, so instead of like sitting on top of the hair, it just goes further back. And there's usually a bow holding it in place so that it really sits at the back of your head and rims your face. So what I did was I started by patterning out this pattern and I'm sharing it here for free. I'll link it down below. It is in the blog post that I'll link and there you can print it out for yourself. You just, it's a PDF file. All you do is you open it up, you print, print it as, uh, press print and then you press from the printer settings, you press poster and scale 100. And then it will be, basically in two pages and you will see a clear line where to connect the pages together and that will be the brim uh, pattern and that gives you all the instructions on how to make the crown piece. And so with this uh, that pattern you can make the same hat. I'll give the instructions here. There is no instructions that go with that pattern basically because this video is the instructions. Now the, this particular pattern is inspired by this fashion plate. So it is a very specific style, but the same idea of a bonnet can be found all the way from 1790s all the way to the late 18 teens. So basically for any of those eras, this would work. If you do end up making this hat, I would love to see your makes. So please tag me in any social media that you share this hat in. I decided to make mine out of white silk, but you could basically make this out of any colored silk, or you could even use a wool, that would be historically accurate, or you could even use a cotton. I don't know if I've ever seen a bonnet with a co cotton from this time period, but you could do it if you wanted to. It wouldn't be like that far-fetched. I cut the brim twice out of the fashion fabric, adding seam allowance. For the outer edge, you want to add a small seam allowance, and for the inner edge, you want to add a three-quarter inch seam allowance. I cut the crown piece once out of the fashion fabric and once out of a cotton organdy lining. Then the brim piece is cut a third time, this time without seam allowance, out of a stiffening. Historically, you would use pasteboard, but I used a mat from Ikea that I'll link down below for a waterproof version. The edge of the crown is folded about a quarter inch and then basted down.
Repeat for the cotton organdy lining. Next, lay the two crown pieces on top of each other, wrong sides together, encasing all the raw edges, and whip gather them together. Whip gathering is essentially a whip stitch that you do around the needle so that you gather the fabric as you go. Burnley and Trowbridge have an excellent tutorial on this technique, and I'll link it down below. Two brim pieces are stitched together using a running back stitch. Then the brim is flipped over to the right side and pressed and then the brim stiffening is inserted in. Then you sew a row of back stitches right at the edge of the brim stiffening onto the fashion fabrics to hold the brim stiffening in place. Then you fold over this edge of the seam allowance as narrowly as possible and hem it down underneath the previous stitch line. brim to the gathered crown, making sure that everything is nice and even. Brim is all pinned on to the call, and I left it open about this. What is it that? Maybe two inches in the back, and that is lightly gathered there. Whereas everywhere else, it's fairly tightly gathered. But I have a big head, so I need that extra room there. Try it on to make sure it fits. It's really funny looking now that the brim is still flipped up. Once you're sure that everything fits the way that you want it to, backstitch the brim on right at the previous backstitch line. Now flip the brim down and the base of your bonnet is ready. Now you can trim this however you like. Use your imagination or follow my instructions to trim it like mine.
Okay, now my cross grain ribbon is sewn into a band. And this is now the correct size to go around the coal and the brim where they connect. And now to figure out how big I need to make those ribbons. We're gonna do this the 18th century way, so absolutely no measuring. And because I do want it tighter so that it puffs out, I think that will be good. I cut out eight same length pieces of taffeta ribbon. Taffeta ribbons are attached to the silk covered button. I mark eight equal sized sections on my gross grain ribbon for the taffeta ribbon to be sewn onto. For the brim edge, the taffeta ribbon is gathered into puffs, and a 90 inch ribbon is added for top. And here is the finished bonnet. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. See you again next time. Bye!